So the next presentation, we'll go back to the one that is in the program, and it's uh, Harry Timmer will present this on behalf of co-authors, Seeking Simplicity, Reliability and Sustainability in Drinking Water Purification for the Future, the Riverbank Filtration-Based One-Step Reverse Osmosis Process from Concept to Practice. Thank, thank you, true. Harry. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, being in the program anyway. Um, and to have me here after this thing. Um, I'd like to present something about, I'm Harry Trimmer from the Drinking Water Supply Company um, OASEN in the Netherlands. It's a presentation from me and from my colleague, uh, Professor Dr. Gang Liu, who was a colleague until, let's say, two months ago, and now is a professor in Beijing. Um, and it's about how riverbank filtration and reverse osmosis can be a perfect combination for future drinking water demand for our company. Um, at first, I'd like to present the, the position of the Netherlands in the Europe. You might be know that um, we're in the end of the River Rhine, so all the water flows through Germany and France, and it's well, they all put something in. So in the end. It's, we can see where it's been. <coughs> and that's what we take it uh, for drinking water. And we use riverbank filtration. This is a, well, a slide which illustrates it. And there's a well and there's a river Rhine next to it. And that's uh, where we take out our water. If we have a picture of this uh, facility, you see the river and there's a the dots are the, the contaminations that are in it. And you see that, let's say 95% depends on the, on the compound, is removed during this aquifer passage. And then there's the purification of the water supply. And it takes out everything else, except for one or two or three very difficult um, compounds. Well, we'll come to that. And there are a lot of compounds in this water. And there's this river, and it's filled with industrial um, emissions, pesticides, pharmaceuticals. So there are maybe 100 million people living in this uh, catchment area. So, and they all contribute one and the other to the river Rhine. So there's a lot in this water, a lot of compounds. And there's another threat because we're at the end of the river very close to the sea and we see this climate change coming and you can model it and they say okay that the sea level will rise and the river will flow less so we'll have the seawater intruding this river so we'll we expect salinization of the river in let's say 20 30 40 years and that's, it's a, a list of threats now I'm going through. This is not a real threat, but it's a, something what's happening. When I started out 25 years ago as a hydrogeologist at this water supply company, we said, oh, it's below 0 0.0 microgram per liter, so it doesn't exist. It's not there. And now we have this great GCLC gas chromatography uh, equipment, and we can measure maybe 100,000 uh, elements on nanogram scale. Mm -hmm. So we find in our water, in our drinking water, in our raw water, we find the complete periodic system and all the combinations in very small amounts. And we find that some are difficult to measure. This is research uh, from last year, from no, from some couple of years ago, from Mr. Rinsma. And there are uh, persistent, mobile, organic compounds. And there's a lot which are very uh, hydrophilic, which has a, a very low um, octanol water coefficient, which like to be in the water and are hard to detect by the normal um, detection methods, but they're all there. 
and we find them more and more, and they are not uh, regulated because the compounds that are regulated that are the compounds that are measured. So there's a, we find more and more compounds which are difficult to do something with. And, well, this is um, somewhere down the, the river Dormagen, I think, it's in Germany, um, along the river Rhine. This is one of the industries that adds stuff to the, to the river Rhine. And we find highly polar, industrial, persistent um, organic compounds, like uh, PFOR, BFOS, the, the perfluor compounds, uh, dioxane, MTBE, and they are, or they might become a serious threat for the drinking water in the end. It's not at this moment because it's all below all the levels that are there, but we have, we're facing um, a community. There's a community that gives, we give them drinking water, and they say, yeah, it's, I don't want pharmaceuticals in my drinking water, even if it's zero, 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 zero zinco, it, I don't want it. And that's what we have to, to work with. And then we said, okay, we, we change. We had normally a purification system which consisted of sand filtration, activated carbon, um, ozone, uh, UV, and it removes every compound below the levels that are there. But we think for the future, we adopt another concept. And this is the concept. We uh, combine riverbank filtration with the reverse osmosis system. And then we tackle all these issues, the salinization, the unknown organic carbon, arbor, organic uh, compounds, and we, we soften the water. It's all good for equivalent cost, the, the same cost. Well, you might know, I think you know, uh, the, the positive side of riverbank filtration. So it, it removes a lot of elements, and maybe the most important thing is that it is very, it ends up with a very stable, low, good quality. It's always 11 degrees. It's a very good pre-filtration for an RO system. This illustrates um, the effect of um, riverbank filtration and the dilution by the, by the river. So on the left side you see, for example, this is Yopamidol. This is one of the pharmaceuticals. And a sewer, there's maybe 10 microgram per liter in it, maximum. But then it's diluted in the river Rhine. So it ends up with, let's say, 0 0.1 concentration. And then after aquifer passage, it ends up with maybe 20, 50 nanogram per liter, which is our uh, raw water, where we make drinking water from. We started this project, ha, five minutes, speed up, yep. Yep. with a lot of research. The research was on uh, what is the best technique, which membranes we should take. We think, okay, we'll take the RO, which is the most tight uh, part of the membranes, and we end up with this scheme, which is reverse osmosis, and then some calcite filtration to add the calcium and magnesium, then aeration, because it's uh, anaerobic in our case, and then it's drinking water. These are the research subjects that we uh, went through, and some results. Um, this is the removal with the RO, with the 
um, refers to osmosis of some compounds. And you see that the, that the charged compounds are, well, good removed, even if they're very small, if their molecular weight, weight are, is, well, about 100. Some more. These are neutral, neutral compounds. It don't work that bad, good, but still a good removal. And another interesting part is the research we did. What will the effect be of reverse osmosis water um, on the distribution system? Will it leach out things or will it change the biology? And we found out that uh, the biology in the system, so the biofilm in the drinking water mains, uh, will decrease because of the, the change, the, 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 because the water is more clean. We took out the nutrients. And this is one of the pictures that depicts it. There's a, if we use RO water, the growth of biofilm will be very uh, small which might even have an effect on the regrowth potential of Legionella afterwards in your, at your home, at your facility. So that's all good. And is there, are there no drawbacks? Yes, of course there are, because there's always a balance, and the drawbacks of RO is that we lose about 10, 15% of the water, more than that we do now. You need to disposed to concentrate, but all over we think it's, it's ten times better than the purification we have. Well, this is what we intend to do. We built one um, last year, two years ago, and a couple next years we'll build the new facilities. And the research, I think, will go on. And Mr. Gang Liu, where are you? Okay. Professor Gang Liu, we're doing research <laughs> with him. He's a professor in, at the Chinese Academy, Academy of Science. He's looking for scientists to go on with his research on water quality and river bank filtration, hydrogeology. So if you like, um, <coughs> talk to him. Bottom line, it's the end. River bank filtration and RO, we think it's a perfect match. And if you like to see more, read this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Harry. And uh, apologies again before for the for the uh, for the mix-up before. Um, again, if there's questions, please hold them. We'll go straight to the next presentation. Thank you very much.